We were coming home from Chicago one night from a mini tour and all of us, nearly all of us, were in the back of Shelly's dad's vehicle. It was huge. Hello! Tour. Well, weekend. Sort of. Weekend. Call it a weekender. Yeah. Most bands call it a tour because most bands suck. <laughs> we were driving towards the Ohio sun and I said something to the effect of that. And Chad took that and ran and wrote this little jammer of a sweet folk country song. And it's about our dear band wife, Shelly, who drove us through the midnight hours towards the Ohio sun with a, my tambourine slapping in the back somewhere unreachable over every bump. Hey guys, we're Cricket Bows from Dayton, Ohio. We're gonna play now. Hey! Good morning, Mr. Wells. Good morning. How was the show? It was interesting. <laughs> a lot of children. It hey. was a lot of children. A lot of children. <laughs> feel first of all to have like a tribute song written to you as like a living human being it's it makes me blush it makes me smile big it's a huge freaking compliment it makes me want to just squeeze you and say thank you you sweet let's just try and start it dead clean how are we starting just straight vocals and everything in all together or do you want to do a little like i think you doom 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 do that first. Okay. You ready? Sure. <laughs> you want to count the same time? One, two. Uh, it's all kinds of good, and it makes me feel like everything I've ever done for you is so appreciated and loved, and uh, I, I that makes me feel happy. It makes me want to give you even more. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> does not lie she tell you right ride or die every time i hear it and every time we play it there's just a part of me that just goes back to sitting in that back seat with my head leaning against the window looking out at the highway with just lights and the cars going by and it just immediately takes me back there yes It was really fun to play keys on it, like, because that's, that's not something that I really get to do a lot. And that's really where my whole musical journey started, was with the piano when I was a little kid. And uh, just to finally be able to, to put that to good use, to where it's actually supporting something and not just like a, hey, I can play keys here, you want to play keys here? But just where it, it just worked. It was like, oh, like that's, that's what should happen here. Like I should just like do keys, do an organ sound here. And the, the video of when we were first working on it at uh, SRS with me playing the wonderful piano from Canal Street, hearing that early version of figuring out what I was gonna do. Cause it's not often that you get that document. I don't know, it's such an insane feeling. God damn, I love music. I will say it is one of the benefits of being uh, at all the shows is to see people who've never heard you before uh, experience a Cricket Bow song. It's never, it's, not, it's just a rocker the whole way through. There's, it's a ride. Everything is, is a ride. 
And so that one brings people in. It's unexpected. I, I think they don't expect you to be singing like, a, you know, so softly kind of, I guess, kind at the beginning. Gospel. Gospel, yeah. yeah. And they're listening, it sucks them in. And then you bust in and they're like, what? You know, the rocking, the rocking commences, I guess. Cricket bows rocking. <laughs> And uh, so it's fun. It's it's a lot of fun to watch people's faces. You you are unexpected. They think they know what you're gonna give them, and just when they think they know, it's something switches. And you keep attention that way. So it's an. I think that's why people say you'll hear you uh, hear people tell you it's an experience. It is because there's always you're causing something else to happen. A new emotion. She's right or die. She gets me high. She does not lie. She tell you right. She drove all night just to get us home by dawn. She drove all. That song is a whole lot of fun. The thing that struck me instantly, those choral vocals, oh my god. So vocally, I've not heard the band do something to that magnitude, you know? Um, I have heard Cricket Bows do some beautiful harmonies, some really interesting vocal stuff. But this is the first time I've heard the vocals like that. And that was exciting. I was like, oh, hey now. Um, so I'm a, I'm a sucker for, you know, for big vocals. This song to me has a really, a really big sound. This is one that I can definitely, this was one of, one of several songs that I was like, oh, I can just close my eyes and I wanna like see them on the stage doing this. Each song is, there's something about every song that is very unique. Feel around right? Mm -hmm. Feel good? Yeah, man. All right. Um, I think the uh, Necronomicon, I think Kyle's my favorite person in it. I like to stare at Kyle when he plays it because I can I can see this internal clock that all great musicians have where, you know, jun, 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 but really in his head, he's like doing all these really small subdivisions to make sure that jun, 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 is exactly right. So I like to stare at him and see if I can see that working in his brain every time we play it. Paint a pretty picture for me of the dead thing. That's a bit of an oddball from the other tunes. Yeah, it really is like you're watching uh, a movie or a play and that's like a scene in it. The kind of like gothic vibrato and the vocal or whatever. It's a, it's a character that you presented. That's how I would like I would look at it. Like to sing is super hard for one. For the lead vocal, it's like you have to want to hear the person that is singing it and oftentimes to get the mood of the song right the singer has to almost like take on a character most singers don't just like step in front of the mic and open up their mouth and it sounds like them and that's it it's like you have to get in character to sing convincingly because you're trying to infuse 
everything with all of this emotion and, and meaning and to convey that to the listener is quite a bit of work on the singer's end. You know, that, that one, it's like that was quite a different character than all of the other tunes. So you really almost have to become a different person to even sing in a way to put convincing sounding vocals on tape. So if anything, that was more of a challenge for you, I would think, to try to like become this person that wasn't on any of the other tunes so that so that when you play it back and hear it back, it doesn't sound like it's not an affectation. On Necronomicon, uh, the intro of the song, Chris, Chris plays, uh, he uses a bow on his electric bass. And it is the most beautiful and scary sound um, I think I've ever heard. <laughs> I come from a bass guitar anyways. It sets the mood for that song early on in a way that maybe drums by themselves could not do. Paint a pretty picture for me every dead thing. It kind of gives you a feel of like uneasiness, but it's just, it's raw and just, that, that intro can, it can get you, it can pull you in real tight. Show me all of the warts and wounds and gravy. It's a damn cool song, Chad. This has got to be a one that, 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 that you you spent a lot of time thinking about how you were going to do that. With the vocals and stuff? The, yeah. Uh, man, Erica is the kind of person where, whether it's one of my songs that's weird, or uh, it's a handmade uh, Christmas tree made out of clothespins, if you show it to her once, she kind of gets it and she knows what it needs and she can do it. She was one of those marching band kids that probably didn't practice as much as everybody else but still played all the songs and, and all of that. So I can't say that we really hammered the crap out of that. There was a, that one was H.R. Uh, Giger, the artist who designed the alien xenomorphs was like probably one of my biggest artistic influences. I just loved the man, his work, all of that. And um, he passed away and I decided there was a song there and it was a very sort of like Nine Inch Nailsy industrial recorded at home kind of song at first, uh, but with kind of like Buddy Holly chords. And uh, I gave it to the band and they kind of shrugged and just jumped in and played along with it. But Erica was just, it's, it's epic fantasy kind of stuff that she just naturally does. So uh, incredible that, yeah, yeah. That, that she can just add that. I mean, cause the song, I, my read of the song is spiritual, uh, soulful, but not in the way of soul music. But there's also this kind of creeping alien feel to it. Um, now some of that, now hearing you talk about it, I feel really vindicated. <laughs> <laughs> but 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 at the same time i mean the guitars do this kind of cool kind of it's not so much like i'm doing this weird thing with my hands to convey the idea of it's not like it's meandering there's a there's a clear purpose in mind there's a clear goal in mind at least to my ear but uh, it's not like you're forcing a path and you know kind of in the way that gracious peasant has this agrarian sweeping quality i would almost think of it as patient is um electric it's alien it's spiritual it's soulful but the component parts kind of add to that almost for me a sense of uneasiness that's really exciting about the song right? Not knowing the end of the journey, right? It's not like a two, four punk beat where I know where I'm beginning and I know what the middle is going to be like. I know where the bridge is going to fall and I know where I'm going to end. You know, it, with this song, there's, there's a journey and you're not quite sure about the path. 